and welcome to Biostock Studio. For uh, Biotech Zone 2023 is a very happening year. They are not only implementing a new strategy with the lead candidate, they are also right now conducting a rights issue of about 36 million Swedish. I am joined by CEO Carl Magnus Hagerkopp and Martin Kwan who is the medical advisor and member of Psychzone's scientific advisory board, who will tell us more. Welcome both. Thank, Thank you. I thought we'll start with you, Martin. Could you briefly tell us about your background? Um, I'm trained as a rheumatologist and actually worked in the, uh, the hay area of the development of uh, small of large molecules, so the, the TNF blockers. I did some phase one trials with adalimumab and spent a lot of time on translational medicine academics and then actually moved to industry to work for various companies developing drugs and inflammation and immunology. You've looked specifically at the role that macrophages plays in rheumatoid arthritis. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I grew up in the time that everyone saw T cells as the key players in, uh, in rheumatology and actually partly because of Dutch nature, you, you like to advert, uh, be the adversary of that. We focused on macrophages, but we also found in the work we've done, for instance, on TNF blockers, that macrophages are way more interesting when it comes to inflammation and the signs a patient has compared to T cells. And now you're supporting Saxone and their project. What is it that makes their project so exciting? Well, largely, I think it's that there's been a lot of interest and focus on cytokines, and I think it, it's relevant and that's proven to be, but there's still a huge unmet need in rheumatoid arthritis. And I think that goes beyond, I think, cytokines. It goes back to the cells that actually drive the disease. And like I said, I, I see a drug that probably has a huge input on macrophages and as such, I think is very relevant for the next generation of therapies. So, Carl Magnus, turning to you, like I said, Martin is a member of your scientific advisory board and have had an active role in shaping the new strategy. Could you elaborate a bit on the process of, of shaping the new strategy for Rebeximum? Yeah. Yeah, so, so it actually started out uh, when we were working with our planned phase 2B program that we had, uh, where we were targeting patients with that had in an inadequate response metric, say, where we got feedback from some of the investigators pointing out a patient population where they see an unmet medical need in uh, that are not meeting their treatment objectives today. So we, we started to look clo more closely at that patient population and reached out to key opinion leaders to hear their view. And we saw a lot of agreement amongst these key opinion leaders that here's a patient population that need new uh, safe and safer drugs that can be applied. Uh, and what is interesting here is that there is a, a high likelihood that a drug that targets macrophages can be meaningful in that setting. So could you just to remind the viewers in very briefly tell us what the new strategy is? So this, the, the new strategy is really to position Rebeximod uh, after TNF blockers. So in a patient population that have a partial response to TNF blockers but do not reach their treatment objectives. Uh, and here we see an opportunity for Rebeximod. It's a small molecule that we can combine with the TNF blocker and by that hopefully be able to get that patient to meet its treatment objectives. So Martin, Ekholmangs, we're talking about patient populations here. What other patient populations have you seen that could be worth a closer look? Well, I think it's, rheumatology is, is about to enter its second revolution. The first revolution was about 20 years ago when we went from legacy therapies to targeted therapies. And there we got a sniff of patients reaching complete response, which means is no inflammation, which means no damage for rheumatoid arthritis. Now we actually have learned that actually cytokine targeting only gets that in few patients. And I think we now move back to cells and realize that, okay, not only pathways, but also cells are relevant. So probably more cell-focused therapies have a bigger benefit. And of course, Colin Magnus, we will uh, finish talking finances a little bit. Like I said, you are conducting a rights issue at the moment of about 36 million Swedish krona. How are you going to use this money? Primarily, the, the funding that we're raising here will be uh, dedicated to uh, all the preclinical, nonclinical, and clinical activities that we have uh, in these programs. And for Rebeximod, it, it's mostly uh, the clinical activities that, see, that we see before us uh, that needs additional funding, of course. 
And as a final question then, what are your best arguments for investing in Saxon? Well, Saxon has a couple of very interesting uh, projects where we are addressing unmet medical needs today. So uh, patients that do not reach their treatment objectives in rheumatoid arthritis, uh, when it comes to our other project, T20K, we are exploring uh, remyelination in, uh, in a very difficult disease. So a couple of projects that are very interesting and relevant, and there is um, lots of investment from the industry right now in these therapy areas. Well, sounds very exciting. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you. you.